I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Lift your voices for me. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, Lord, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me way back, way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you, Jesus. I worship and I adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. How many know that we don't need no music to worship God? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love, I love you, Jesus. I worship and I adore you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Oh, 
Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, more than anything that's going on in my life. Lord, I love you more than anything. More than the money that I got in my back pocket. Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, Lord, Lord, I love you more than anything. God wants those spiritual fathers, like so Floyd Mayweather's, so Muhammad Ali's, so Mike Tyson's, I know we all no strength to fight because we all been in a fight once or twice in our life. Some of us might not be the best. Some of us might not. My, some of us might lost a lot of fights, but we all is no strength to fight. Because let let somebody say something to you you don't like. You just see how quick you be ready to fight. Some of us will fight anywhere, at our job, church, or even on the church parking lot. Anywhere we got hands on the person. Or let somebody put their hands on your kids. We'll see how safe you are. You might put your religion on the back burner for that one minute. But the Bible is no stranger to fights. Let me just take this time. You, let me just put this on a spiritual clothesline and let me just blow your mind for a minute. <laughs> let me just take this time. Some of us, we've been in fights many times. Like I said, the Bible is no stranger to fights. Many people fought in the Bible. David and Goliath. Daniel, he fought for his life in a lion den. Well, the three Hebrew boys fought in a fiery furnace. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, even Paul state he fight with his flesh on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. That's we all have our personal fights that That's we right. deal with on our daily life. Right. Some fights, we're able to walk away without any bruises or any scars. <laughs> but some fights leave us with some headaches, Heartaches and deep emotional scars. Some fights, you all, you heard the saying, never let them see you sweat. But how can they not see you when you're drenched with them? Let me just take this time. Just name three fights that we've all been in our life. The three complex fights we all deal with on our daily basis of life. The first fight is a me versus God fight. We all we all deal with that fight. That's the first fight. When you're not doing God's will, you are fighting against Him. God give us 365 days a year. Some of us only come to church when it's convenient for us. Or how the weather feel like. Can we say ouch? Some of us only go to church on Christmas, Mother's Day, or Easter. We got some CME saints in the building. And some of us, we just don't go at all. I'm wondering. What excuse you going to give God about not doing his work? If God trying to build you up or trying to take you to a whole new level, but you always hit God with a no call or no show. God give us a commandment in Matthew 28. He said, go ye forth in the world, teaching. How can we teach? Will we never available for he be taught for he to teach us something? We have so many social tools 
that we didn't spread the gospel with. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram. How much time do you take to post something about Jesus on your Instagram? How many times you take time to tweet about Jesus? How many times you put something on Facebook that God had blessed me with something? Sorry. But I'm just saying, we got all these tools that God gave us, and we use it for our own personal interests. What if God had our same complex? What if God said, you know what? I'm not going to fight with you. I'm just going to give up on you. What if God picked one of his favorite days to bless you with? What if he bless you only on Christmas? Or only on Mother's Day? Or only on Easter? How will you feel about what God blessing you. I'm just saying, the second complex we have is the me versus the world complex. We all struggle to not let the world influence our Christian behavior. It is nothing wrong with having fun and going out, but it's how you conduct yourself in the environment because the closest thing to, to church or the Bible that people will see is our lives. How can we try to bring people to Christ when our lifestyle is raggedy? How can we say child, God is truly making a change in our lives? When we hold the grudges, when we speak, when we can't speak to one another. We hold jealousy in our hearts. We still hold things that happened a long time ago and we still have forgave people. Or we, or it's, they turn it into a more social gathering. Or when we be out with our friends, and we be the first one to pass our drug on the floor, or be the first one on the table. How can we tell our friends that we know Jesus, and we be laid out in the club? Mm. How can we tell our friends that we go to church every day, that we go to a club more than church? We go on vacation more in the church. We go everywhere else than church. We treat church like if we want to go, if we want. Now, if God going to bless us, we might go. What will we tell our unsaved friends? If every time we go out, we be our first one to run to the bar and get about five drinks. How can we tell our friends that we know God for who he is and he changed my life? If you can't keep, you keep a different man every day of a week. But you say God is really delivering you from something. You should shame the devil and tell the truth. God haven't delivered you that. But how can you tell your unsaved friends? about God is really working on you. Yeah. And when your lifestyle is unfit for the kingdom. Yeah. But we ought to be the first one to be telling, you know, Jesus, he came to my life. He working on me. Amen, praise the Lord. After we be ready to drink some, ready to smoke some. I was like, I never thought, I was like, me, when I was in my college days, you know. <laughs> when I was in my college days, I mean, <laughs> I just go, <laughs> I know I just go out, I know I just go out, have fun. And, you know, you know, then we call, you know, get turned up. I don't get how can we turn up for the world more than Christ. Come on, come on. I understand you like to have a good time, but you also have a good time in, in Jesus. Yeah. If you're truly devil, sometimes you just got to tell devil, let's step in the ring and let throw these hands. 
Sometimes you gotta have a devil. You thought you had the best of me. Devil, you thought you had the best of my family. Devil, you thought you had me be. Devil, I float like butterfly, sting like bee. I guarantee you will last three rounds with me. Sometimes you just gotta be ready. Be ready for that fight. Cause once that fight come in your life, it be you and the devil. You just gotta look in my eye. You just can't, you can't be scared of me now. You just gotta know, you got all things. You do all things to Christ. God gave you all the power. Sometimes you gotta go through 12 rounds with the devil. First round, you gotta speak it into the atmosphere. Second round, you gotta declare and decree it in the name of Jesus. Third round, you gotta start praying about the situation or the problem. Fourth round, you gotta start cutting your friends off. They mean no good to you. Yeah. Fifth round, y'all y'all cutting bad habits off. Yeah. Sixth round, y'all start stop going to new places you shouldn't be going. Seventh round, y'all stop drinking all the alcohol and smoking all the weed. All that so rock and all the weed is no good for you. And sometimes y'all quench off their living water. Seven that seventh round, oh yeah. But the eighth round. You gotta get a little bit more active in church. You just can't be a pew member. You gotta do a little bit more in church. You gotta go, you gotta go a little bit of Bible study on Tuesdays. You gotta go to Sunday school. You gotta be more active, you know, be productive in the Lord. Oh, but I'm not ready. <laughs> the knife round, you gotta have some patience. Because sometimes not having patience can really cut our blessings. Because then when we don't have patience, patience in our life, we saw us speaking craziness in our life. Yeah. Cause we see everybody else getting blessed. Uh -huh. And we realize, we, we praying by God, when you gonna bless me? God, when you gonna, gonna pour out? But we gotta be patient. Yeah. Patient is a virtue. We yeah. really gotta work on them. Yeah. The 10th round, it'd be kind of a little tricky. The 10th round, then when everything started you know, coming focus, then when everything started coming back, then when all your ex mess are coming back in like trying to get back attacked. So you gotta be strong enough, you gotta be able to bob and weave. You gotta, oh nah, you can't have me like this. Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to move with it. You gotta, you gotta be able to get against a rope. You gotta do a little bit of rubber dub with it. You gotta be able to, you gotta stick and move with it. But oh, but can I tell you about the 11 round? The 11 round, oh. Then when things start to take, then when things start to get good now. Then when you, then when you know your blessings is coming, uh -huh. then when you know everything started to get right, yeah. then when everything started to act right in your family, then when the people started, you know, being more godly yeah. and more, more like the devil, yeah. people started, you know, start really working on that thing. Then when you actually see your blessings coming in the atmosphere, and the thing you spoke into your life, you start realizing that. That means sometimes, you know, you gotta take it off. Your, if your hair is too tight, you know, you gotta take it off now. Yeah. If your tie too loose, you might have to take it off. Yeah. If your shoes hurt, you might have to slip them off now. Yeah. But sometimes, if your jacket, you know, if your jacket is a little too, too heavy, you might have to take it off. Sometimes, if your tie too loose, can you try to see your blessing really come in the atmosphere? Because that 12th round come is the final round. Yeah. Then, when that, then when that thing you've been praying about has come, has, has come to pass in your life, then when your praise, then when you have your praise break, then when God brought you out of your situation, that means all the heartache you've been through, all the headaches you've been through, all the disappointment, all the emotional scars have been healed in your life. Then when you finally say, thank you, God, I have made it through my storm. Ain't nothing holding me back. God, I give you all the praise. God, I thank you for bringing me this. This far in my life, God, I thank you for the good fight. I thank you for every every disappointment in my life, God. I thank you for all the people who walk out my life, God. I thank you for all the people who talk bad about me. I, God, I thank all the people who say I would never be nothing. God, I thank God for everything I'm doing in my life. God, I thank God for all my haters who told me I would never do nothing. Who told me I would never graduate from college. That I would never be there in my life. God, I thank you for everything you do in my life, God. I, I thank you for blessing me with everything.